The protagonist of the film is a struggling freelancer, Yuki. While in a desperate search for a job one day, he is approached by an old friend, Anna. She tells him about an amazing opportunity to earn a million dollars in a week. Although the announcement looks sketchy, they decide to go through with the admission process just to see where it leads. A few days later, both Yuki and Anna are in a car with a bunch of other contestants who also applied for the job. They are taken to a bunker-like building in the middle of nowhere. They walk inside, hoping to find an explanation, but the building the building turns out to be completely empty. A robotic voice then reveals that they will be living together for the next week, under heavy camera surveillance with no phones or computers. All they have to do is survive for the week and take home the $1 million prize money at the end. This movie is based on a true Mr. Beast video. None of the contestants understand the task completely, but they agree to take part in it nonetheless. A final announcement gives them one last chance to walk away, but no one does. Instead, they walk further inside a dining hall, and the door closes behind them, initiating day one. On a wall nearby is a timer that shows how long the participants will have to stay in the house. Beneath that is another set of numbers that no one understands the meaning of. They assume it is unimportant, and decide to focus on the food on the table. The participants don't fail to notice ten dolls placed on the table, representing ten of them. A man named Osako suggests they introduce themselves to get to know each other better. It turns out that he is a doctor who has also brought his wife, Wakana, so the two can win double the amount of money. I'd say it's more likely that that doctor's wife is going to kill him. Next is a college student named Maki, also here for the cash. Fuchi is the oldest woman in the lot, and Ando is a mysterious alcoholic who doesn't like to talk a lot. Everyone introduces themselves except for a beautiful girl named Misa, and a young man, EY. In the end, Hiro introduces himself. He is the talkative one who keeps the conversation going. Their conversation is then interrupted by a robotic noise coming from one of the dolls. The participants are introduced to the robot attached to the ceiling, responsible for punishing the ones who don't follow the rules. The set of rules says that everyone will be given a room according to a number assigned to them, but no one is allowed to come out of their rooms after 10 p.m. If someone breaks the rules and the robot finds them, they will be eliminated. The group questions what elimination means, but they get no answer. According to the second rule, if someone commits a crime, everyone in the house should work together to solve it. One detective will point fingers at who they think the criminal is. Then, everyone will vote their verdict on the matter and eliminate the alleged criminal. The detective who solves the case will get a bonus if they survive till the end. Lastly, the game will end at the end of the week, or when only two survivors are left. The group grows nervous upon hearing the last rule, but Yuki calms them. He claims that if they live peacefully, no one will be harmed. And they will all get the prize money. A while later, the old woman and Misa are cleaning up the dishes when a talkative hero comes to them with a conspiracy theory. He claims that he recognizes the old woman from TV and asks her if she is a serial killer. The old woman nervously laughs, but the comment is enough to make Misa suspicious. Somewhere else, we find out that Osako lied about being a doctor to make people trust him. He and his wife Wakana are talking about their genius plan when they are interrupted by Hiro approaching them with another conspiracy, claiming that EY is a serial killer. Hiro could be a little more creative with these theories, but it is clear that he is trying to stir up drama by making people suspicious of each other. But his actual motive is still unknown. In the second hallway, Ando finds bloodstains on the wall. He assumes the game they are playing has been played before by another group. When the clock strikes 10, everyone goes into their room to avoid being caught by the robot. Yuki finds a chest by his bed and opens it out of curiosity. Inside is a fire poker and a note that asks him to kill a person with it. Yuki quickly closes the chest and goes to sleep scared. The next morning, he is woken up by Anna, who reveals that every room has a chest with the same message but a different weapon. Some contestants may decide to use their weapons, which means everyone must be careful. Suddenly, a scream from the hallways startles everyone. It turns out that someone used their gun and killed Hiro with five bullets to his body. Everyone is shocked, except EY, who laughs to himself, making the group believe he is the culprit. A scared Yuki tries running away, but the only door to the outside world is tightly shut. The group now has to investigate who the killer is, knowing that it is one of them. Suddenly, the guard carries Hiro's dead body to a room filled with eight coffins for the eight people who are about to be eliminated. Hiro is thrown into one of the coffins before the robot asks everyone to start the investigation. If the criminal is found, the detective, the criminal, and the family of the dead body will be given double the amount of prize money. Osako accuses EY of killing Hiro because he thought he was a serial killer. Moreover, the fact that he laughed when he saw the dead body 
body only adds to the group's suspicion. Yuki takes EY's side and tells everyone to show their weapons before they start pointing fingers. The one who has a gun will automatically be the culprit. The plan sounds good, but the rest of the group refuses to oblige, because showing their weapons would put them in danger, since the killer would go for a member with the least dangerous weapon. Eventually, EY gets the majority vote and is declared a criminal. The guard robot picks him up and throws him in jail in the coffin room. Upon returning to his room, Yuki opens his chest again and is shocked to see a gun inside. The killer has exchanged his weapon with the fire poker to blame the murder on Yuki. He hides it, scared of being falsely accused. Then, the group decides to check EY's weapon out of curiosity and find it empty. They assume that this means the killer is still one of them. A while later, Yuki meets Anna in the kitchen and tells her about the gun, insisting that he is being framed by the real killer. Anna believes that he is a good person and trusts his words. On his way to the room, Yuki finds the old woman in Anna's room going through her stuff. She thinks that Anna is the killer, but is proven wrong when she finds no gun in her chest. At night, Yuki checks the gun again and finds out it isn't missing any bullet. Confused, he counts them repeatedly and declares that Hiro was not killed with this gun. At the same time, something takes over the old woman and she decides to play detective, going around the house looking for the killer. She is only a few steps away from the room when a nail hits her forehead, ending her life. The camera moves and we see the killer is none other than Misa. The next day when the dead body is found, all blame falls on Anna. Since everyone knew the old woman suspected her of being the murderer, they think it was a revenge murder, even though Anna insists she is innocent. Yuki also takes her side, making Osako believe he is in on the plan. He brings out a knife, telling everyone to back off and let the culprit be punished. Ando tries calming the situation but is in turn accused of being the murderer. When pushed, he reveals that six months ago, his son left home, saying that he had found a gig that pays a lot of money. He never returned home, which is why Ando decided to investigate this gig himself. He thinks that his son and the people with him died because they went against each other. The rest of the group understands his concerns, and the conflict dies down on its own. When everyone goes to sleep, Ando comes to Yuki's room and reveals that he has found a way to prevent any more deaths. He has figured that the robot moves only in a clockwise direction and remains dormant for 10 minutes before every round. This means if they walk behind the robot at all times, they will be able to roam around the house without the fear of being caught. This way, the group decides to keep watch in a pair of two every night to be safe. Anna and Yuki take the first shift, and while they are at it, Anna confesses she has started to like Yuki. Busy confessing their love, they do not notice the robot turn in a counterclockwise direction. The robot is seconds away from catching them before they hide. A few hours in, it is Wakana and Misa's turn to keep guard. However, Wakana is late, so Yuki decides to stay with Misa to help her. In the room with the coffins, Wakana and Osako are having fun together. Wakana remembers she's supposed to partner up with Misa and runs outside to help. When Osako is alone, the ceiling starts moving and crushes him to the floor. The following morning, everyone finds out about his death. A devastated Wakana vows to kill the person who killed her husband. I will get revenge on, on, on the ceiling. Suddenly, the ceiling moves again, making the group run out of the room. Outside, they see the college student holding a remote that controls the ceiling. He says that he found the remote on the floor and was just testing it, but he knows that no one else in the room believes him. In a moment of panic, he brings out his crossbow and threatens to kill anyone who blames him. Everyone takes a step back, except Wakana, determined to avenge her husband's death. She hits the guy with a battle axe, later committing the unthinkable herself. With the death of three people in a row, only four survivors are left. It is then revealed that the strange set of numbers on the wall is the number of streamers watching them. Yuki is furious that there are millions of viewers watching them die for entertainment, but he can do nothing about it. Later, in the evening, Misa and Anna are making tea for everyone. When no one is looking, Misa puts a drug into the kettle and serves it to the rest of the group. She discloses that she has a son back home who is sick, and she is here to collect money for his treatment. It is the very reason she killed the old woman and is willing to kill everyone else for the money. At night, Yuki goes to Misa's room to talk, but suddenly, his hands stop moving and he falls to the ground. Misa tells him that she has drugged him and the rest of the group using a muscle relaxant. You won't die, she says, but you'll probably poop yourself. She gets ready to kill Yuki, but he manages to push her away and run for his life. In the hallways, the robot finds them and warns them to go back into their rooms immediately. Just before it shoots, Yuki runs into a nearby room, but Misa is killed in the commotion. The next morning, the effects of the drug wear off, and the three remaining survivors come out of their rooms. They notice that Misa's death scene looks very similar to how Hiro died. This makes Yuki realize that the first death was a ploy, just to start drama among the participants. Hiro was a spy kept among the participants to plot them against each other. He volunteered to die, so his share of the 
the money could go to his family. From the very beginning, no one would have died if the group decided to work together and not against each other. The robot announces that Yuki has gained twice the prize amount for solving Hiro's case. Yuki brings out his gun and places it on the table, followed by Ando doing the same with his screwdriver. They do this to show complete trust in each other, and also because Ando didn't have a chance with that screwdriver anyway. However, Anna refuses to participate. On the morning of day six, Yuki finds Ando with his gun. The man puts it away immediately, hence nobody thinks much of it. Then comes the final day of the game. Yuki walks out of his room in a good mood, only to find the weapons missing. He runs to Ando's and Anna's room, but finds no one. While looking for them, he notices the door to the prison is wide open, which means Iwai has escaped and is seeking revenge. He also finds Ando's dead body in the coffin and loses his mind. Iwai takes this opportunity to hold Yuki in a chokehold. It turns out that the ceiling moving remote was his weapon, and he was the one who killed Osako for putting him in jail. The blame came down to the college kid later on, because he found the remote that Iwai had thrown outside. Shockingly enough, Iwai doesn't have the gun, and claims that he didn't kill Ando either. With only four minutes left for the game to end, Yuki and Iwai fight for the screwdriver. Iwai wins, and is about to kill Yuki. Before Anna comes to his aid with the gun, she is about to shoot, but Yuki stops her, remembering that Ando made some changes to the gun in the morning. Amidst the struggle, the gun ends up in Iwai's hands. He fires and dies in the explosion that follows. Finally, Yuki and Anna are declared the survivors. The door opens, and a man hands Yuki his share of the prize money. Even though Anna is left without any money, she doesn't seem that mad about it. She finally reveals that she is a part of the game, like Hiro was. Her job was also to pit the participants against each other, and she was the one who put the gun in Yuki's chest. The person who let Iwai out of the cage was also her, but when it came down to Yuki's life, she couldn't let him die. After dropping these truths on Yuki, Anna simply drives away. In the final scene, we see Ando coming out of the building. He discloses that he pretended to die, so no one would try to kill him on the final day. On their way back to the city, Yuki tosses the bag of money, not wanting to associate with any part of the sick game. The top comment of this video is going to be about Among Us or Squid Game. Just call in that right now. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.